Okay, good morning, Maria. Welcome, very much welcome to Presenza. Welcome to this space of Builders of Future. For those of you who don't know her, Maria Lourdes Khan is the former Secretary General of the Asian South Pacific Association for Basic and Adult Education, ASBAE, a post that she held from 1995 to December 2020. Having recently retired from her position, she is currently supporting ASBAE as an advisor for policy and strategic direction. A right to education activist, no, Maria, she has served on various boards of global civil society networks and represented the civil society sector in several international policy bodies or platforms on education. A Philippine national, she currently lives in Mumbai, in India. Maria, please tell us about your main current interests and activities, and maybe some specific aspects also of what you are doing now, currently or certain elements that you would like to highlight. What led you to this so special commitment with life? Well, thank you for having me. And well, good morning where you are. It's evening now in Mumbai. <laughs> and uh, I'm delighted that we are able to have this conversation bridging uh, rather massive uh, time zones uh, and across the miles. So thank you for having me. Uh, yes, Pia, as you mentioned, I have just left my position in ASPE. Uh, maybe just to give you a little bit of a background about ASPE is yes, to also uh, yes, preface please. Um, how, you know, what I'm doing now and my engagements. Um, ASPACE is like the sister regional organization to CLADE, uh, the Latin American Campaign on the Right to Education. We are a regional civil society network, uh, one of the oldest in the Asia Pacific, which is committed to advancing the right to education for all. Uh, we have members, more than 150 uh, NGOs, civil society, community educators, activists, national education campaign coalitions operating in more than 30 countries in this vast and diverse region. Incredible. Um, and um, yes, as uh, you have mentioned, uh, I am still involved, even if I have stepped down from this post of 25 years. Yeah. Uh, because I, I basically believe that, well, the struggle is not over as far as the right to education is concerned. And I'm deeply committed to continuing to contribute to that uh, so that quality education is enjoyed by all, not just any education which demarcates between the rich and the poor, uh, which demarcates between people of different um, of different races, uh, of different genders, of different locations, but uh, an education that is truly transformative, no? uh, that uh, is relevant, uh, that is uh, bound to uh, the realities and is grounded on the realities of the different contexts and is uh, striving towards social justice, towards building a sense of uh, a global community that's advancing sustainability and a just peace. Um, I am also very, very deeply committed to building and strengthening civil society organizations and, organi yeah. and civil society institutions. Um, and a big part of that is leadership building. Um, and um, encouraging a brand of leadership that is um, horizontal, uh, a brand of leadership that is participatory, uh, a brand of leadership um, that enables leaders to operate more and more, not only in a single sphere, not only 
at community levels or grassroots levels, but in actions that link this up to regional, national, and global spaces. And uh, ASBE has been continuing that work for decades, and ASBE in itself is an example of such a civil society institution. So I've been very passionate about strengthening those efforts, and I continue to this day. Uh, what led you there? How come yeah. you? What led me to this line of yeah. work? Um, yeah. Well, I suppose it starts from, I suppose, my childhood, really. Uh, my mother uh, has been my role model. She was a single woman, a widowed uh, very early. Uh, um, and she, on her hands, uh, relied um, raising two uh, children uh, by herself. Uh, and we were not well off, uh, but even so, she had a deep sense of community and uh, a generosity of spirit. And uh, my childhood is uh, very vivid with my memories of my childhood has been very vivid with um, community actions about charities that she run about giving back to uh, the rural village where she grew up from. And, um, and I think that's instilled with me, first of all, a sense of what social service, uh, if you like. Yeah. I also was a student um, at some of the darkest years of military dictatorship and authoritarian rule in the Philippines. Yes. Uh, and I entered university um, at the time when the student movement was flexing its muscles and saying enough is enough. Um, I had the privilege to be um, able to join uh, the state university. Um, and this was basically the, the, the university which created uh, the, the leaders of the country, if you like. Even the dictator was himself part of, was a product of this university. So in a sense, it it had a special place in society uh, and was therefore treated with kids' gloves by the regime. It was thus the bastion of academic freedom. We were, the university was able to provide a safe space for protest and yeah. for the anti-dictatorship struggle. And I was, I, I threw myself into all of that. I, I became part of uh, politics of the student movement, which was one of the most prominent vocal critics uh, of the regime. Um, this was in the late uh, 70s and towards yes. the middle of the 80s. Uh, this protest movement broadened further. And um, I think you would be familiar with the people power in the Philippines. Uh, we yeah. were able to arrest uh, power, no? political yeah. power. Uh, dictatorship. And we found ourselves, those of us who were active in the student movement, in, in a new situation where all of our, all of our student lives, uh, our sense of movement and our sense of change was of resistance, was yes. of protest. Uh, it had now transformed into a situation where there was opportunity to rebuild there was opportunity to actually reshape society to what we could only dream of in the earlier right. period. And so many of us who were active, my generation was active in the anti-dictatorship struggle became the nucleus of what became the NGO community in the Philippines. Yes. Uh, and that's what led to my engagement and my lifelong passion to building and strengthening and nurturing NGOs and civil society, first in my country and then later on in the Asia Pacific. Extraordinary, really a, a wonderful process uh, shaped by the opportunities that education gives. Exactly yes. what you are doing and you are fighting for all the rest of the world, no? Yes. So, yes. so aside from education itself or through education, I don't know how to put it, but which would be 
the, the intangible elements or, or the concrete elements that you think would be needed in order to, to go forward for a nonviolent world, for, for another, for the kind of world that we deeply aspire, no? Well, one of the strong lessons that I've learned in my many years in the student movement and in the in this work, no, in the civil society and NGOs, yes. I think um, I think is the value of uh, promoting inclusion, no, either certainly through education and certainly in our own in our ways of work, no. Um, yes. And um, and part of inclusion is basically appreciating diversity, celebrating diversity, um, being able to build processes and a culture of, that celebrates differences, no, uh, and that appreciates and respects differences. Um, I think in. It was a big learn. Inclusion was a big learning for us, actually, in my generation, because yeah. the period of dictatorship, uh, it was, it was actually very easy, and it was perhaps made the, the call of the times to see the world in black and white. It was, it's a, it was a polarized situation anywhere. There, anyway, there were there was a dictator and there was the rest of us. Um, so to see the world in black and white was perhaps what the struggle was all about at that time. But as we were reshaping, as we were reconstructing, it was very clear that, well, change came in far more different colors than black and white. Um, and, and I think it was beginning to uh, break ourselves out of the earlier mindset, um, which is what brought us forward and made us more uh, effective in, in actually concretizing change. So I'd say inclusion and fighting for inclusion is very important uh, to build a just and more peaceful world. Yes. Uh, because also of, I think, where I've come from, where I've, where my, my engagements have been at different levels. Uh, I have seen the power of basically working across cultures, across continents, across countries, um, where in the beginning, I think, uh, again, because of the context of protest that I was part of, the narrative is really more about being a nationalist and being anti-imperialist, you know? Um, so th there was a fight to, um, really advance the interests of your nation yeah. state country. Yes. Uh, that's changed dramatically for me. Um, as I think we matured in the movement, as we matured in our understanding of the world, uh, because there is a lot that binds us as a global community. Um, much is gained from solidarity, um, even in terms of gains in our own countries, if you like. And more and more, we realize that decisions um, are made outside of our nation states and of our country. So it's yeah. in the interest of civil society as a whole of um, our sector to actually come together across countries, build global solidarity. And that goes a long way, I think, in achieving the just peace that we want. Yeah, maybe we are in a moment um, highlighted by the pandemia, no? Yes. But we yes. are in a moment in which uh, a global, a global human nature, human nation could be built like the convergence of all the cultures, the inclusion of all the diversities yes. could give birth to a new type of world that is universal, that is no longer national, but at the same time, it's very local, no? Yes. It's very local, and, and it's just, very much linked to each other. Absolutely, no? and yeah. respecting of differences and, and exactly. preserving. Exactly, exactly. So in that right. sense, uh, I really appreciate a lot your contribution, Maria, because we are in this set of uh, interviews is a cycle for all the months 
of March and uh, until the 8th of April. We are in these interviews of women from all over the world, as different as possible. That is, in, in, at the same time, we are all building a new kind of society, which is global and is local, but is peaceful yes. and gives uh, inclusion to everybody, open up to a nonviolent world. So I don't know if you want to add something in that regard, or uh, your last words for this interview. Well, basically, I suppose not not too much, except to wish you all a uh, happy International Women's Day. It's uh, I think it's <laughs> yeah. time for us to be having this conversation uh, while the world celebrates the power of women and yes. the power there in fighting discrimination in all its forms. So more power to you. And we as Presenza, we thank you a lot for this moment, but also remain in your disponibility for whatever you will need from us or whatever diffusion you will like to do to your job, to your work with all these um, different organizations and grassroots organizations. Thank you so much, Maria. Oh, thank, thank you, you so to be much. with My us. My pleasure.